Welcome to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. This podcast is for NP students studying to pass their NP certification exam. Getting to the correct test answers means breaking down the exam questions themselves. Expert Fitzgerald faculty clinicians share their knowledge and experience to help you dissect the anatomy of a test question so you can better understand how to arrive at the correct test answer. So, if you're ready, let's jump right in. Suicide assessment should include an assessment of both risk factors and protective factors. Which of the following is a true statement with respect to suicide assessment? So it's a rather straightforward question. Which of the following is a true statement? You're looking for the one that's true, and by definition, the other three will be not true or less true. So let's see what the statements are. Is it true or not to say each protective factor mitigates a risk factor? Is it true to say bonding with a pet is an internal protective factor? Is it true to say strong sense of cultural identity is an external protective factor? Or is it true to say there is no clear increase in suicidal rates with antidepressant use? Which one of those is the true statement? And the answer is D. Yes, D is the correct answer. And I know that you might be thinking, wait a minute, don't antidepressants increase the risk of suicidal ideation? Well, they might. There, there certainly is some data to support that, and there is an FDA black box warning about increased suicidal ideation in persons 24 and under who use antidepressants. There is a whole contingent in the world of mental health that doesn't really think that that's an accurate representation. However, you do want to always remember yeah, that, yes, there is an FDA black box warning about the increased risk of suicidal ideation with antidepressant use in people 24 years of age and under, and it should always be part of your charting when you put somebody 24 and under on an antidepressant, a warning about the potential for increased ideation, uh, a, a plan about what they're going to do about it if it occurs, make sure they have access to crisis, at the very least 988, something like that. So yes, there is this FDA black box warning about suicidal ideation, but suicidal ideation is a continuum. Not all suicidal ideation leads to suicidality. And while there is an increase in suicidal ideation, which can be anything as vague and ill-defined as, oh boy, this would be easier if I wasn't here. If I was dead, I wouldn't have to worry about this. If I just woke up dead tomorrow, I wouldn't have to deal with this anymore. That is suicidal ideation. And that's a far cry from actually developing a viable plan having an intent, having access to means, and doing it. So yes, while there is an increase in suicidal ideation ostensibly with antidepressant use, especially in young adults, 24 and under, there is no clear increase in actual rates of suicide. So D is the correct answer. A, B, and C are not true. Protective factors do not mitigate risk factors. And when you document a suicidal, a suicide assessment, you really do want to go further than just negative SI. This is like the antithesis of good assessment and good charting. In mental health, we always want to be on the lookout for risk factors for suicide. And so our patient encounters should include a better suicide assessment than just no SI. A good suicide assessment includes an assessment not only of risk factors, but also of protective factors. We always want to chart these, but that doesn't mean that a protective factor mitigates a risk factor. We don't say, oh, well, if you have four risk factors but four protective factors, they cancel each other out and you're not at risk. In the world of suicide prevention and our, our understanding of suicide, however many holes in it there might be, it, it is absolutely crystal clear that protective factors do not mitigate risk factors. We identify them, we help the patient identify them to identify those things that they have to live for and the resources they might have. And we always wanna emphasize that, but we don't, we don't say, oh, if you have a protective factor that crosses out your risk factor and we won't worry about you. Any risk factors are concerning. Any risk factors should be taken seriously and addressed. So A certainly is not true. Now, B and C are pretty much opposite ends of a spectrum. In the world of protective factors, we recognize that there are 
external protective factors and internal protective factors. And you might logically interpret that an internal protective factor is something about the patient themselves, something of them or within that's considered an internal protective factor, whereas something outside of them in their environment, their home, et cetera, that's an external protective factor. So actually bonding with a pet is an external protective factor. Children, pets, they are considered, I'm even being married, a significant other, these are all considered external protective factors, whereas um, cultural identity, um, um, problem solving skills, skills in conflict re resolution, religiosity, spirituality, these are all considered internal protective factors. So yep, while we always wanna highlight the protective factors and identify the risk factors, we always, always take risk factors very, very seriously. Thank you for listening to NP Certification Q&A, presented by Fitzgerald Health Education Associates. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. And for more NP resources, visit fhea.com.